Hey everybody, I just want to welcome you to the broadcast again. It's good to be here today. Just I hope all's doing well with you. And uh, I want to tell you, we're praying for you, and y'all pray for us. That uh, we just do the Lord's will. And uh, my wife's gonna sing a song, and when she gets done, I'll be right back. Have you prayed for a loved one? Struggling hard with pain You ask the Lord for healing But that healing never came And in spite of all your efforts The good Lord called them home It's hard to let go when you're trying to hold on Now you're down in the valley Looking to the sky And you're praying, Lord, you know what's best But I don't understand why If you could hear your loved one Speaking now to you Why they'd say you wouldn't be grieving If you only knew If you only knew I'm just going home Your prayers have been answered My sickness is gone The sun always shines, we're having a time if you only knew. To be absent from the body is present with the Lord. I'm in the arms of Jesus now, and I'm not suffering anymore. Hand in hand, we'll stroll together down heaven's avenue. And we're having a big celebration, if you only knew. If you only knew. I'm just going home Your prayers have been answered My sickness is gone Things look much better From heaven's view The sun always shines We're having a time If you only knew The sun always shines, we're having a time if you only knew. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I like that song there. I uh, want to talk to you today. Uh, I know there's a lot of people listening over the internet and, and watching by TV and all. We just want to tell you we appreciate you watching us and uh, uh, we uh, just try to obey the Lord and do what He has to do. And thank God for uh, people listening. And, uh, and we had a good service this morning up in Georgia. Had a good time. The Lord moved, and uh, uh, we just thank God for what He's doing in our lives and hope it. Uh, I know people's got troubles and things going on out there in their life. I, I don't have to call anybody up and ask them. Uh, these things going on. There's an enemy out there, and uh, I know things is going on. And if you say and you're living for the Lord, why well, the enemy's going to come at you and he's going to mess with you, going to try to cause you problems and all that. Just know that Jesus is real, 
And we, we've got to keep our main focus, and that's on the big picture, and that's making it to heaven. And we've got to stand on what thus saith the word of God. We've got to trust the Lord. And listen, if you're out there today, and you've got to, uh, don't live in uh, regret, the things that you've done in your past, things that's happened in your past, all these things. Just ask the Lord to help you and move on from those things. The enemy can use your past to keep you bound down, and you don't never have no joy, no peace. You don't never have no uh, uh, happiness in your life. Uh, you know, I, when, whenever I get down and out and, and it seems like I'm bothered about something, if I'm not careful, I'll let my uh, down and outs, It'll spill over and cause other people problems and keep them down and out. But I just try to, when things start going wrong in my life, you know, around and situations and things like it, I just try to call upon the Lord. Uh, the Bible says to cast your care upon him for he cares for you. He loves us. What we need to do is not to get selfish in our, in our life and think it's all about me. What about me? What about me? Uh, and, and we can go to if we're not careful we'll try to fill that void in our life of the things of this world and it won't work we need to fill that void in our life that we're lacking with Jesus Christ and when we have a problem going on in our life instead of running from him we need to run to him I want to read you a scripture right here a few scriptures in the Bible right here and I want you to listen to what this man uh, was saying and what his mind was on and what his thoughts is up on and then see what the Lord told him when he got uh, done uh, with this parable here. I want to read it to you. It's in Luke chapter uh, uh, 12. I'm going to read verse 16. Let me, no, let me read verse 15. He said, and He said unto them, Take heed and beware of covenants, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. In other words, the Lord don't look down and see uh, whether you got $5 million in the bank or you got $5 in the bank. He don't look down and see if you're living in a 15-room house or a or two-room house. He ain't looking down to see if you're driving a Rolls Royce or a Pinto. A lot of people don't know what a Pinto is anymore. Them things are something that's hard to see anymore. But a, so it don't matter if you're driving a $50,000 car or a $5,000 car. Jesus don't look down at that. He looks on the, what's inside of a man. The things that you can't see, he looks on it at their heart. And what's important is, is where do you stand today with the Lord. I know where I stand with the Lord. I know I'm saved. I know I am. I know my name's written down in heaven. Uh, I don't think that I'm saved. I don't wonder if I'm saved. I don't have to go ask the preacher, am I saved? I don't have to go ask uh, anybody, am I saved? I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. Do you know that you are today? Think about that. Listen to this scripture right here. I want to read on. And he uh, spoke a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? This is talking about the rich man now, the, guy, the rich uh, guy. He said, What shall I do because I have no room to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns, build greater, and there will I bestow, will I bestow all my fruits and my goods, and I will say to my soul, So thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take eat, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Now you see, it's all about him. It wasn't about what can I do to help my neighbor? What can I do to help my loved ones? What can I do for God? What can I do to try to be a light to somebody? It was about himself. It was all about what he had, what he wanted to do, what he wanted to put up. See, he had barns, already had barns. Instead of saying, I'm going to go and add on to them and uh, put stuff in there and share it with my neighbors, or, or he could have said, I'm going to get my neighbors to come over here and I'm going to give them my barn, let them take it down and put it over at their house. Instead, he's just going to tear it down and start over. You see, that was selfishness of his part, saying, I, 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 I. I mind, I mind, see. We can get in that uh, mode if we're not careful of, well, what about me? I've done this, I've done that. They didn't do this for me, but they did it for them. What about me? What about me? Listen, it's not about uh, all the things that you can see of your possessions. It's about what you can't see on the inside of you is where do you stand with Jesus? Is your heart given unto the Lord or is it uh, out of the devil? 
Think about that. If you're either saved or lost, well, there's no in between. You can't. There's no in between. You either saved or you lost. You either serving the Lord or you ain't. There ain't no in between. He's not no uh, part-time God. He either is or he ain't in your life. Jesus Christ wants to be all in all in your life, and he wants you to let him shine out of you like he shined out the day on, uh, when he hung on the cross. Listen, everybody that was there saw him hanging up there, and when it was all said and done, they knew that he was the son of the living God. Amen. Listen, today, if you've got in that mode, a spirit of pride to get you into that, unforgiveness and hatred in your heart and things that's happened in your past will get you into a mode where it's all about you. If I had this, if I had a bigger car, I'd feel better. If I had a bigger house, I'd be happy. If I had more land, I'd be happy. If I had another wife, I'd be happy. If I had more kids, I'd be happy. If I didn't have the kids, I'd be happy. If I had this, if I had that, if I didn't have this, if I had that, if I, 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 I. Stop Think about that for a minute. Give me Jesus, praise God, and put myself over to the side. And so what can I do for somebody else to help them? Stop thinking about where you might be in your life. What kind of, what, what are you, what kind of, what, what kind of reaction are you having on you, loved ones and people around you, if you're in that miserable state of, what about me? You know what can solve that? Jesus Christ. Amen. Nothing else. You know what it is? You're lacking something in your heart, and you're trying to fill it with things. And those things have brought forth misery in your life. You've took things that's happened in your past and you're still carrying it with you and you can't do nothing about it. See, I can't go back to last week and do something about what I've done last week, but I can do something about what's going on in my life today. And through Christ Jesus, praise God, I can do all things. Philippians 4 and 13 said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Listen. 1 Peter 5 and 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is at a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Is he trying to devour you through guilt and condemnation of what, you, what has happened in your past? Listen, you might not can do what's about nothing that happened in your past, but you can do something about what's going on in your life right now. What happened back then don't bring it up and keep it up in front of you. Keep you looking back. You need to look and see what's going on with you today and look around at the people that's around you today and see what you can do for them. See what you can do with Christ, for Christ. The Lord loves you. See, this man here, uh, this parable that he's talking about, this man right here, look what he had. He had everything he needed. Boy, he said, he said to my soul, soul, be of ease. You've got all you need. Listen to what God told him right here. Verse 20. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou had provided? So it is that lay up, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself, and is not rich towards God. In other words, all that matters when it's all said and done is where do you stand with Jesus? The Bible says it ever. Uh, Kneel, bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. I'm going to tell you something. We need to know where we stand with the Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, he, uh, John chapter 14, verse uh, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father but by me. How can a man be saved, praise God, except to hear the word and it convict his heart? Listen. If you've been, if you don't, uh, if you uh, don't know you're saved or not, you need to uh, ask the Lord to, uh, and let you know. It's like I heard this uh, somebody talk about they had a revival at their church. There's a lady been coming to that church for 20 years. That uh, that man came in there, an evangelist did, and preached that revival. That woman got up and got saved. You know what happened? She thought she was saved, but she wouldn't see. There's a way of knowing you're saved because the Bible says over in the Romans chapter 8, he said that his spirit will bear witness with my spirit that I'm his. You'll know that you're saved. If you're saved, the Holy Ghost is in you, and he'll, he'll bear witness with us what you hear that you're saved. You'll know you're saved, and you know something? You won't be able to keep it in. You'll tell people you're saved. See, Jesus loves you. It's not about what you have here that you can see. It's about him. See, I, you, you say, well, I, I can't see Jesus. 
I can't either. You can't see that wind out there when it blows either, but you, all you can do is see the evidence of, of that wind blowing. When you see a tree moving, if you walk outside, you feel it blowing on you. Uh, you don't see that wind, but you can feel the evidence of it. That's the way the Spirit of God is. You can't see the Spirit of God, but you can feel the evidence of it. When you're in church, you see somebody get up speaking in tongues, shouting, uh, jumping up and down, praise God and praising the Lord. That's the evidence of the Spirit in them uh, doing that. It's not them doing that, putting on no show. Listen, Jesus loves you today, and he wants you to know that he loves you. And if we don't get these, our past under the blood and get it uh, took care of, listen, it's gonna, it'll destroy you. It's like taking a board and laying it out on the ground outside. Go down here to uh, Lowe's and buy a two before and lay it out there. I'm talking about a spruce or a pine. You lay that thing out on the ground, let it lay there for about two, uh, about two or three weeks and go back down there and, and look at it and flip it over. You know what will happen? Them termites will come up out of the ground and they'll eat that thing up and it'll turn it into this ashes. You can stomp it and it'll crush it out. That's what the enemy wants to do with you, with your past, that you ain't getting it under the blood and ask him to help you with. He's taking his, your past and he, he's eating away at you like that uh, termite would be on that board laying there. He's slowly but surely taking your past and eating away at you. He's telling you there ain't no hope for you. You've done this, you've done that. If I could have done this back then, it wouldn't be where it's at now. If I hadn't have done this, it wouldn't be where we're at now. If I'd have done this, if I'd have done that, if I'd have done this. Listen, you're not perfect, and the Lord knows you're not perfect. Well, you can't do nothing about what happened back then, but you can change your life around today and do something different with it. Jesus loves you, and he's trying to tell you something. He's trying to tell you, I love you. But I'm not going to overrule your uh, free will that I gave you, but if you'll allow me to do it, I can come into your life and help change your circumstances. You see, the Bible says in this world we're going to have tribulation, but Jesus said to be a good cheer for I've overcome the world. You see, we don't have, I'm like Paul, if I had hope only in this life, I'd be all men most miserable. But thank God there's more to this life than just to what we see here, praise God. I serve a heavenly uh, Father, Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in heaven. It made a way for me to go to heaven and get out of this life. I'm like a pilgrim passing through a strange land. I live on the, uh, over in the Cherokee County. I, I dwell over there. And I live there. Got a little old spot of land there where we live and all that. But let me tell you something. That's not my home. My home's in heaven, praise God. And I'm planning on uh, making it. I got my mind made up. My heart's fixed. I'm going to fight that good fight of faith. I'm not going to look back because there's nothing back there. Listen, I've, there's things in my past that uh, I, I could might could have done different. I could have done this, not said that, done this, done that. But listen, my past is behind me. Praise God, it's not in front of me. I'm not going to drag it along. I'm going to cut that rope off. Praise God, because Jesus said who he sets free is free indeed. Praise God, and the truth will set you free if you'll receive the truth. And nothing but the truth, so help me, God. If you keep walking the way you walk and praise God, you ain't going to never have no joy. You ain't going to never have, bless God, no peace. Praise God, listen, get set free from that. See what God will do for you. It'll change your life. I don't care what kind of lifestyle you've lived and what you've done or what you ain't done or where you've been and all that. Jesus knows where you've been and what you've done. He's trying to set you free, praise God, from that bondage that the enemy set up on yourself. You see, you say, well, I ask for forgiveness, and then in a little while I'm burdened back down with it. You're going to have to have the Lord in you. You're going to have to have Jesus in your heart. You're going to have to allow him to take, praise God, and change, praise God, the way you think, the way you look, the way you uh, think about things, you see. The enemy is going to mess with you in your mind. I just like, if I make a mistake, the Holy Ghost convicts my heart, and I ask the Lord to forgive me. But you know what? I know he said he is faithful and just to forgive me. If I would confess my sins and ask him to forgive me, he said he is faithful and just to forgive me. When I do that, Jesus forgives me, and then I got to forgive myself. Let me read you a scripture. I'm fixing to flip over in here in the first John. <clears throat> Jesus loves you. He wants you to know that he loves you. He's real. Listen right here. If we say that we have no sin, we can deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Listen right here. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, these things I write unto you that you sin not. 
And if a man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the appropriation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Listen, Jesus loves you. If you ain't saved, and you listening to me today, Jesus Christ wants to save your soul. If you're listening to me and you've been saved before and you've allowed your past and things that's happened in your life to come between you and the Lord and it's a, you got that bitterness in your heart and that hatred, you know something. You know, I, I used to think it, it only affected that person. But you know something. If you're, eat, if you're deep down and you got that bitterness in your heart and that unforgiveness in your life, I used to only think that it was only affecting the one that had that in their life. But I, I tell you what. I've, I've looked at that again, and i got second thoughts about it. It don't only affect you. It's affecting everybody else around you. Because if you're miserable, you're other people, uh, you, you could be causing other people to get that stuff out of your life. Ask the Lord to help you with that. Ask Him to uh, save you if you lost. If you are saved and you've let that eat in on you. Listen, I just, right here, I just had read you that scripture. Let me read it to you again. First John. It's in 1 John, not, the, uh, not St. John, but 1 John, over to, close to the end of the Bible, right before you get to Revelation. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I didn't write that, but I'm reading you the Scriptures. These Scriptures right here are for our correction, for our help, for our forgiveness, to help us, to guide us, to lead us in the spirit of truth, and to help us, to guide us, to live the way that the Lord wants us to live. If you'll listen to what thus saith the word of God, he's trying to help us. He loves you. He died for you on the cross over 2,000 years ago, and his intent is for you to go to heaven. It's nowhere in this scripture right here, praise God, that you should be overcome by this thing. The Lord loves you. At, uh, unforgiveness and regret and things like that. Listen, It's real. Listen, we've all done things and made mistakes in our past, and we've had situations in our family's lives, all these things. All this stuff is real. But if we, can't, if we don't forgive ourselves, how can we go out and forgive others? We've got, we've got to do that. We've got to forgive ourselves. Listen to this right here. You say, well, I don't know if it can be done or not. I've got a scripture for you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There had no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who's faithful? God's faithful. He said, I'll be faithful to you if you'll, if you'll hear me. Listen right here. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way that escape that you may be able to bear it. You know something? You've walked with it all these years in your life. And you've made it this far. If you'll allow God to do it, that temptation ain't going to overtake you. God's faithful. He said he'll help you with that, and you'll be able to bear it, and you'll be able to go on and get it behind you, get it on the blood, and you won't be walking in that. Uh, uh, it's kind of like a condemnation that you, that you allow and be brought up on yourself by the enemy, thinking that you're not worthy. You this, you that. Jesus said you are because he died for you on the cross at Calvary. See? The Bible says that my righteousness... In the sight of God is his filthy rags. Listen. But his righteousness, when I got saved, came into me, his blood covered me, his mercy and his grace, that is what makes me worthy to go to heaven. It's not about me, it's about him. It's about what he done at Calvary. He loves you today. He wants you to know that he loves you. And if you'll let him, he'll help you with them situations in your life. I want to find another scripture right here right quick. I'm just trying to read them out as the Lord gives them to me. That's the reason I just, I, I like to follow along with the Lord. Somebody's listening today, and you're being eat alive with your past and the things that you've done, and you're living in regret. You're going to have to stop doing that. You're going to have to get that under the blood and quit doing it. It's going to destroy you. The thing about it is it's affecting people around you that you love, and you don't want that to be happening, and the Lord don't want it to ha be happening to you. And God can set you free from it. But you're going to have to be willing to ask the Lord to help you. He's standing at your heart's door knocking. He's standing there and he's saying, hey, I'm here. But I'm not, I can't force myself into you because I'd have to go again my word. 
because I, I give you a free will. But if you'll let me in, I'll help you with that situation. Listen right here. Blessed is a man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Listen, temptations are going to come. Things are going to be going on in our life. We're going to face things. But Jesus said, I'll face it with you. Nowhere in this Bible right here where you read can you, that you can show me, nowhere in it that where Jesus Christ is overcome by anything or anybody. He wasn't overcome by the devil. He has, listen, we're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. The enemy has the authority to bring those things to you. But if you're saved, you have the authority over it. Let me read you a scripture right here. Somebody's listening to me right now, and I don't know, you might not be ever tune it back in and listen again. But I want to read you something because you may just be here visiting and I don't know what's, uh, who you are or who it is, everybody that I'm talking to. But I want you to listen to something right here. I'm talking to somebody, if you're saved, if you're not saved, you're going to have to ask the Lord to save you and then you'll have this. But if, you, if you're out there and all this stuff's going on in your life and you've allowed it in your life and you ask the Lord to forgive you, listen, you take authority over this thing, listen. It's in Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You know what that's telling me? That Jesus in me, dwelling within me, the Holy Ghost power of God, dwelling within me, when the thoughts and the, and the enemy comes or temptations comes and all those things comes, this, the devil has the authority to, to present it to me. But the Lord's telling me right here, I give you the power and the authority over those temptations and over them thoughts and over your past, not to let it be brought back up to overcome you. You see, it's about him. It ain't about me. I can't do it for you, but you can through Christ Jesus. You're going to have to take authority over it. See, I, I, have, I have to take authority over it when things come my way. I have to take authority over it to keep it from affecting me. And you're going to have to do the same thing. If you don't, you're not that joy and peace and stuff that you see other people have and you want it. It's available. You're just going to have to reach out to the Lord and allow him to work in your life and allow his word to present itself in you and allow that, uh, the joy of the Lord to come out of you. It's that, listen, you're going to have to fight the good fight. If you want to, if you want to do different, you're going to have to, to, to fight that, uh, that and thoughts. You're going to have to let your past go, and you're going to have to take authority over it. Listen, Jesus loves you. I don't know who it is listening to me. And I don't know how many is listening. How many of you are having these problems going on in your life? But Jesus Christ is real. He wants to be real in your life. The same as he overcame, he said, because he overcame, we can overcome. Because he lives, we can live. Because he is our peace and our joy, we have that peace and joy. Listen, we love you, and we only, I, want you, I want you to listen. We're going to be praying for you, and you pray for us. And everybody out there listen to me today. If everything's going good, well, you pray for the ones that we were just talking to right there. Until next week, God bless every one of you, and we love you all. And praise the Lord.